I'm going to uh, look at uh, a couple of old Sanyo 5 watt 6 channel two way radios. These are AM in the 27 megahertz CB band. They don't work. Let's see if we can get them going. I have a pair of old Sanyo squawky walkies, as we used to call them. These are 5 watt walkie talkies that operate on the 27 megahertz Citizens Band, GRS Band. They're old. Uh, they required a license when they were in service because they were 5 watts. Would run on regular or rechargeable batteries. And they don't work. At least I'm told they don't work. I'm also told that one of them had parts stolen out of it. So let's uh, do an inspection first and see if there actually is any parts stolen out of one of them. So let's uh, open these things up and take a look at them. From what I understand, this is the one that works, and this one doesn't work. So there is the, the battery case, which doesn't even come off them completely. It's, you, take the, you take the back off to load batteries. But there are wires there that uh, you have to be careful, otherwise you have to break the wires off. I remember, uh, I think before we talked about dummy cells. Well, these ones use dummy cells. This one, the dummy cells are missing, but this one's got a couple dummy cells in it. This is what we're talking about. We talk about dummy cells. It's a dummy cell. What this is, is it's uh, nothing. It's just a can that provides a short from one end to the other. And what they were used in is radios that required, or devices that required 12 volts. Normally you would load 10 or 8 AA cells, but if you were going to use rechargeable batteries you had to use 10 because of course rechargeable batteries only put out 1.25 volts so you needed 10 cells to get to 12 volts and of course regular dry batteries 10 cells would give you 15 volts now that normally would not be a problem except for the output power on these transmitters is controlled by you guessed it, the voltage. So if you're running your transceiver on 15 volts instead of 12, well, chances are you're not going to burn out anything, but all that's going to happen is you're going to have more power than was legally allowed on these units. So the manufacturers, when they sold these, they sold them with a pair of dummy cells in each one so that if you were going to use dry cells or alkaline batteries, you would load the dummy cells. Of course, none of us did. Okay? Anybody, anybody that had these things, we threw the dummy salt away and put alkalines in here because they go further. Anyway, I'm going to inspect this thing because I've been told that there has been some parts robbed. I can tell right now that there has been because this one doesn't have as many crystals as this one, but that's okay. As long as the crystals are for the same channels, they're going to work. But this one's only got a few channels in it, and this one's got a lot. But I was told that there were some parts that had been taken out of one of these. So I'm going to go and look and see whether I can see any that are any discrepancies. So this might take me a few minutes to examine these, but I'm going to just give a quick visual and see if I see any discrepancies between the two. Because I say I was told that one of these radios had some parts, had a one or two parts taken out of it. So we'll figure it out. And indeed, there is a part missing from this radio here. If we look down close next to this blue wire right in here, you will see that there is a component that has been removed right there. And that component is a diode. And here it is on this one. Here's the diode right here. Now I knew that this I knew that there was a part missing because the the, the, the person that gave me these radios told me that they clipped a part they didn't know what it was 
but they said there was a part that was taken out of this to fix another radio and I was assuming it was a diode or a transistor that was removed so there's a diode right here that is missing off of this radio and it just looks to be a standard glass um, germanium diode so I'm going to go and see if I can find one and see perhaps if that will make these things work kind of cool not that I have any real use for vintage walkie talkies other than hey they gotta have them working right so and to show them off because these are pretty rare I would imagine today looks like there's been some other wires cut here there's a red and a black wire that are that are cut off looks like they probably go to the meter on the front and they've just been cut and then they need to be reconnected I think that's where they go both of them is cut and I have a feeling it goes to the power meter and the battery and power meter anyway let me see if I can find a glass diode that might be a stretch to try and find one of those here but I might have one and here's something that should make these uh, quite collectible look at the final inspection this one's 65500660 and this one is 65500664 so both of these units when they were produced were only four apart now that's the inspection number I don't know if that's the serial number or not got a big pile of diodes there I'm sure that one of these is going to be a germanium glass diode like something like that let's just check one of them out okay I have one of the diodes here and we'll test it and see if it's any good so first we'll test it in the reverse direction and it's open which is good so now we'll test it with the negative on the cathode it's germanium so it should be about a 0 0.2 volt drop which is in contrast to silicon which is typically a 0 0.7 volt drop and there we go 0.243 so this is a germanium diode that's what is used as the detector in AM radios and this one's good so let's uh, we'll look at the orientation from the original uh, unit and then put it into the other board and see whether that'll make these things work I'll first tin the pegs that are sticking up from the board and tin the new part that's going in Put a hook in the in the wire. So that I can clip it over top of the original one and solder it down. Get that 
sides down. Do the other one. This is to say it's not pretty, but considering what it is I'm working on. There. I do believe that that's uh, installed it in place. Yep. That's in there pretty solid. Let's um, get a couple power supplies and we'll power these things up and see if they uh, send and receive. Of course, I will reconnect the battery meters on both of them that are disconnected. Looks like the other ones had the board pulled out because the wires from the meter are actually going under the board instead of coming through the board like they're supposed to. But this is kind of a dumb design because you had to disconnect the meter to, to work on these things. As I say, I've never, I've never been into these. They were given to me a number of years ago. And I just kind of, I've got the boxes for them too. The set came in a box and, and uh, I just haven't done anything with them. Okay, power is disconnected off this too. And it looks like they just, the power wires, but look at the other one where they're soldered on, they go to... power jack so say I think these are kind of a stupid design to tell you the truth the way that uh, you have to uh, to change the batteries on these things you have to be really careful because uh, you know it's hey it's a Sanyo what do you expect but I mean that's got to be a really dumb design that just the very fact that the backs are always attached and you've got to take the back off of them to uh, change the batteries it means there's a real risk that damage is going to happen. This is another dumb idea. Antennas that unscrew. Uh, don't do that unless you have the back off it because putting the antennas back in you're likely to pinch wires. Gonna dig up a couple power supplies and we'll see whether these things do anything. Okay, I've got these stupid walkie talkies, these squawky walkies hooked up. Let's see whether they will transmit and receive. And unfortunately, they all have different channels in them. The only channel that they both got that's common is uh, channel 9, the emergency channel. Actually, they have channel 12 in them too, but uh, the crystal for one of them, the channel 12 crystal, won't work. So here we'll transmit from one to the other. <coughs> Feedback. Hello, hello, hello. That one works and going back the other way. Hello, hello. Got the other one a little ways away. Testing one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. We'll switch and use the other one. That was that for AM quality sound. Yeah, these things really did have good sound quality back in the day, didn't they? Considering that we're basically using a two-inch speaker as a microphone. As that's what they used on these, was they used a speaker also as the microphone. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three. For what they are, they're kind of working. Now, I'm sure a recap on these would probably improve their performance because they haven't been used in many, many years, but the units themselves are kind of functional. The antennas on these things are huge. The antennas extend up about three feet. I don't even have the antennas up all the way here. But uh, the antennas, 
go almost up to the ceiling. That's enough of that. Too old. Vintage. Sanyo crystal controlled. 5 watt. CB radios. You had to buy crystals for every channel that you wanted on these things. This was before they had the 23 and 40 channel synthesized radios. That's uh, that's it for this thing. Uh, I think these things though. I know what I'll do with these. I'll take them and sell them at a ham radio flea market. Thanks for watching.